What's up guys, Yes McGann here, and today I am, well, not playing Smite as we're playing a different game that I've been playing quite a bit the last few days, and it is called Fortnite, and I've been having a lot of fun with this game. It's, a, uh, I guess a defense-based game, I, that's completely what it is, where you harvest your, some tools, or, or harvest resources and stuff, and then you build a base around something, or you try and save things, but it's mostly... A, it's mostly a defense game where you harvest and then build a base around something to keep it alive through hordes of zombies, which are called husks in this game. But yeah, a very simple concept that they've actually made a pretty complex with different different things that you have to worry about. Like you have to have different things like survivors, defenders, heroes, which are they have different heroes in this game that you can play and all, all sorts of things. Weapons. It's, it's, it's a lot of fun. It's a lot of fun. Definitely so far but i've been playing it quite a bit and i've gotten not super far yet but a decent amount for how long the game's been out and how long i've actually had it which i haven't had it the entire four day early i guess pre-order bonus you got to play four days early if you pre-ordered it but if you pre-ordered it you automatically were included in that four days so it's basically just released a few days early but the official release is today when this video is going up so I do recommend getting this game. It isn't a free game, so you do have to purchase it. But yeah, so like I said, defense-based game. We're, I guess we could just get into a match now. And this is the first area. I got to the second area so far. And I have to do a quest where I have to find clues to find a weatherman or something. Which will make more sense if you're playing the story. Although, to be honest, I haven't really been paying attention to the story. I've just kind of been playing the missions but yeah so this is the map of the second area that i'm in right here you can see my main base and these are all the levels i can play so far so i guess we'll just do the fight category two storm pretty simple one it's just basically you build a base around things and you defend it from a storm of husks like i said which are zombies basically so, we'll see if we can do well this game. I think no matches available. I guess it's just looking for a server to put me in. Which is kind of weird because you, you can actually play this by yourself. So, I'm surprised I keep saying no. S okay, there we go. Now we're going to be able to get in a server. Alright. Get into a lobby here. I do have my game on public, so we can get in with some random players. I've I've been playing this for this game mostly with my friends, so yeah, it's gonna be interesting playing with some random players. I have played a few times with random players, but it is a much different experience. But looking at the heroes, they do have different classes of the heroes, and right here I have a soldier class, and it's his name survival is Jonesy as he's. Just really tanky, he heals whenever he kills things, as well as he has a bit more HP than normal soldiers, or the rest of the soldiers, so we can go through here. We have a little squad bonus, which you get benefits from the characters, even if you're not playing them, if you put them in your squad area, and then you have some defenders that you can use whenever you're on a mission, but when we have four players, we're not going to be using those, but let's see, I'm going to look at my character, I don't know if I want to play this character or not. It looks like we're with another soldier here. Which we could probably get away with running the same class. I've noticed that classes do make a difference. So, like, you usually want to have your team pretty balanced. But you can, you can get away with it in, uh... At least in the levels I'm in currently. But, yeah. And they also have different rarities of the characters. Epic, rare. I think I'm just going to go with Jonesy here. Old Jonesy, I was thinking maybe I could go for the Shock Trooper Renegade. Which is a very interesting character. A, a different type of soldier. Less... I, I think this guy's a bit more simple than this guy. A bit more ability-based. Or I could go for my Outlander, but... The Outlander has an audio bug that kind of messes up the game. So <laughs> we're not going to be running with that. I think we're just going to go with Jonesy here. And we'll get into the match, which is... Starts out with you basically looking around for, I think on this one we're going to be looking for where we're going to place our atlas, which is that thing on the screen right there which, that we have to defend. Yeah, but I think I'm going to maybe get some resources right now. We are pretty heavily, heavily looted at the moment as far as resources go. 
So it's not that big of a deal, but we'll, I think we'll just look around, maybe collect some wood here. Because with commandos, especially this one, where you, in order to get the heal, you have to kill an enemy with a ranged attack. He does use a lot of ammo, especially with the guns I have. I don't think the guns I have are really the, the best for ammo, because I run out so fast on this character. It's a sing it's a semi-automatic weapon, but you have to shoot a lot of shots in order to get the enemies down. Okay, we'll activate this thing, which could show a few things in the area. That's uh, nothing I'm really too interested in. Um, right now I'm looking for some blue glue or blue goo, which allows us to start up our atlas and get the round going, as well as get some team boost, but it looks like we ran into a husk here. This is a Pretty big one. He shoots lasers out of his eyes, so I think we'll just uh, take him down here. Oh yeah, we're melting him. And my weapon has a bit of dot damage because of the uh, upgrade. Has a little bit of a burn on it. There we go. Take him out. Not bad. Not bad. And blaster da data sample. I think we'll just pick that up. You found out. Okay, so that's for someone else. And so we can place the atlas down right here. Actually. Yeah, I guess I will. There's no reason not to. But right there, you could on my mini map, you could see a yellow exclamation point. And hold on, I gotta take out these these baseball husks, which are pretty easy to take out. Those are they're really squishy, but they do do a lot of damage, especially if you're not paying attention. But right here, we're defending two atlases. In the past, I usually only had to defend one, but on this level, you have to defend two. But they're right by each other, so you're able to build right next to each other. And ooh, we got the, we have three yellow exclamation points, which means there's three places where I can get clues to find the weatherman for my quest, which is part of the main quest. And yeah, I think I will just hurry up and collect all of these. And right there, you can see a blue exclamation point. That's an an encampment. And if you activate that, you have to fight a lot of zombies. You gotta fight a lot of zombies. And it looks like this one is. This clue is underneath, so we're just going to break through that fence. There we go. There's some stairs here. Uh oh Got some zombies. Attention. And, oh, you can hear a little something. You can hear something right now. That's actually the sound of a chest. So, oh, yeah, there it is. Chests tend to have some nice loot in them, so we'll see what we got here. Got some traps. Some crafting materials. Not bad. And I just recently lowered the amount of... Things I was carrying in my backpack because last few times I've been playing, I've been uh, running into some issues with the amount of stuff I was holding in my uh, inventory. But ooh, we got this guy, and ooh, I just missed my uh, <laughs> missed my pickaxe knockdown. But let's see, I think we'll take out the pistol here. Okay, is that enough damage? Not quite. Uh, take one shot on both of those. But yeah, we'll activate this. Give ourselves some movement speed as well as... Show the blue glue ar around us. But I'm just... I'm just gonna use it for the movement speed. Oh, wait. Hold on. Exclamation point. Closer than I thought. This one was not here before. I don't know. Maybe... Did that thing that I just activate show that where that was? It, it might have, honestly. I don't know. I still am not quite sure what some of the things do exactly in this game, and I'm actually, I guess, past the beginning. Things are, because the, the first early levels are really easy, but I've gotten to the point where things are starting to get a bit more, a bit more difficult and a bit more interesting, and I fell straight to the ground right there. I was looking to get the blue goo. Is it, okay, it says it's in here. Oh, there's some enemies under me. We'll break through this wall. We'll give us a bit of wood while we're at it. And we'll take this. And you want to hit gnomes because sometimes they have rare stuff. Like, there we go. A nice rare crafting material. Good for making some high tier weapons. Okay. I'm just going to search all this stuff. I don't really feel like breaking it all yet. Ooh, did I hear a chest? I do. I hear another chest here. I can barely hear it, but it's there. Is it up there? 
Oh, it's up there. Nice. Perfect. That is perfect for me. So I can just put some stairs in here. And... Uh, leap. We'll just leap right here. And we'll search this chest. This is a blue one. I'm not quite sure. Oh, oh. Oh, yeah. Blue ones a lot of times are mimics. I always forget about that. But Mimic chests, uh, they do a lot of damage. But it's in a bad spot. So I can't really get out here. Which is good for us. We can just take it out really fast. Take out our pistol. Take it out really fast. Oh. It is looking kind of buggy. Alright. And ooh. Whenever you kill a mimic, it leaves some presents behind. Let's see what goodies we got here. Ooh, wow, a lot of nuts and bolts to build some to build some weapons, and it looks like these guys are just killing the zombies for the encampment. And ooh, encampments also leave you some goodies if you kill it, but we didn't really get too much. We just got some resources, which never hurts. But I mean, getting some crafting materials would have been nice there. We'll just hit that ammo box up. And I think I'm gonna. It looks like she's gonna be building it over there. Bob a wild man. Playing a character, a hero that I don't know the name of because I don't. Honestly, I don't know the names of most of these heroes yet. I have that one though. I think her name is Wildcat, the person, the one this one's playing. Soldier just like me. They're all kind of similar. The soldiers and uh, if they're in the same class, I mean, they're all kind of similar, but they all excel at different things. Some of them get different upgrade bonuses, things like that, so. We'll just have to see how this goes. So, like, some of the soldiers are a bit more supportive. Like, the soldier I'm playing is a more of a lone wolf kind of character. You can play him in a single player game because of how tanky he is with his pass, with his, uh, healing and everything as well as having a bit higher HP earlier on in the game while uh, the person that person the wildcat uh, I think that's the name <laughs> I'm just gonna go with wildcat because that's what I think it is uh, she ha is a bit more supportive her the first ability she gets instead of a ground pound like I have our ground slam she gets an ability where she has she's able to increase attack speed as well as I think damage and is it just, yeah, I think it's just attack speed and damage, but I mean, obviously, those are both a really good combination. It's just a big steroid for your team, so a bit more supportive there. A bit less self-sustaining, but still really, really good. And this character actually never gets that. I think maybe the legendary version may get it later on, but... I have the rare version of this character, and I evolved him once. That's why he has, he has a little, little do-rag on. Uh, he, he, he doesn't have this on his path, or doesn't have that ability on his path, so. Not gonna be as much of a team player, but, you know, be able to do some damage. Survive a bit longer than your average Joe, as well as we don't really have a, a tank character, so. Me being able to survive a bit longer is very nice, although I think of this, it's not really gonna matter too much. Later on, I think down the road in, in levels, tanks are gonna be a bit more important since they're able to provide usually a lot of control with the melee attacks as well as the abilities like some of them have taunts and stuff so yeah as well as the characters that are the the tank characters i guess are all in the constructor constructor class which are better at building things they get like little little benefits from building like they'll have lower costs on buildings and stuff which is pretty cool uh, i i personally haven't been playing the constructor class but obviously it's very important because this game it's pretty Pretty based, or pretty, uh, reliant on the building, so. I can see that being really strong, but I have, I have a friend who's been doing that, so I, I, I usually don't have to build too much, but it looks like since we have three soldiers, we're gonna have to be doing a bit of building here ourselves, most likely. Uh, Bob, a wild man, seems to like to build, though, so. I'm cool with letting him build until... He gets bored or something. Oh, I meant to search that, but I kept hitting. You know, it happens. I'm just kind of trying to break this house so we can have some room to build because the enemies, it looks like they're going to be coming from, they're coming from the north right here. Whenever we 
activate the atlases to begin our our game. So I want to make sure we can have the ability to build a bit more. And is there anything up here? Doesn't look like it. I can search this. Get some bacon, which is actually used for crafting in this game, which is interesting. I, have, I haven't seen bacon used as a, really a crafting thing in most games. But this game seems to like bacon as a crafting tool. And honestly, I think it's pretty funny and cool at the same time. All right, so we're going to clear this out. These walls are still good for defense on against the husks, but you can't build on them, which is really the reason I want to clear these out. All right. Looks like one of my teammates is in a bit of trouble right here. There we go. We're able to take him out from a distance. Okay, I'm gonna take out this pillar. And continue just knocking these buildings out of the way. Taking down this house one step at a time, one floor at a time. Usually, a, a building like this, you would just be able to break all the walls at the bottom, but because of how this thing is on a, a landmass right here, you kind of have to break a bit more but there yeah, there you there you can see that it's all falling apart once she broke the piece of the building that was connected to the landmass so not gonna be too bad and it looks like my teammates fighting something over here I think I'm gonna continue building here and help out the team a bit more we're using bricks to build this house wood is the weakest and brick is the I guess I think yeah brick is the second. It's the it's the it's the middle one. The uh, metal is the strongest material, so it's good to keep that in mind. And I think I'll just put the door because you usually want a door so you can get in and activate it, or you could do it on the second floor or something as well. But I because of the way this thing is set up, I kind of want to put a door over here, so I'm gonna put it on the side opposite to where the enemies are coming from, so they can't really just take that wall out because I believe these walls with the doors are a bit weaker than the normal walls not a lot weaker but I think a little bit I could be wrong about that but I believe that is the case and let's see the recommended build limit is 85 here that's not a lot of building room we may just have to give up a little bit in terms of uh, traps maybe just try and fight things off a bit more ourselves but something I can do, see, these are connected. Oh, this is actually, took a hit here. I might actually put some stairs right here inside and then connect the two. I don't know. I don't, I don't want the, the stairs just to be blocking the pathway in the middle. I guess it's fine. Let's see. I think I'm just going to... Let's do this. We're going to be building one extra structure, but I think it might actually be better for my team because I don't know what they want to do here. So we'll just do this. The husk can't walk on walls like this, so it's going to put them at a bit of a disadvantage. This should be fine. And, okay, we're at 49 right now. Don't allow us to stand on here. We have a little bit of building time left. Oh, that's weird. Ew, actually, they're putting metal... Metal ceiling over there. Okay, now, now, now this is just awkward. This is just awkward. I probably should have put metal ceiling. That's a, it's metal is stronger. So if they have a a lobber, which is a husk that can well lob things at your building, 
it can do a lot of damage. A lot of damage, so the metal roofs can help with that. But honestly, with the the we should be fine with just this though. Still, I think we'll be still be fine. All right. It looks like they're trying to put some traps down now. I'm gonna put a little bit. I believe I played this level before, and I think you're able to fend off these zombies without really or these husks. Husk zombies, same thing. <laughs> Without actually having to use too many traps here. I'm not completely sure, though. Because the maps do change every few hours on this game. Just to keep things, you know, keep, keep things fresh. So I'm not completely sure, but it looks like this person's just upgrading all the, all the tiles. So, we, we, could, we could join in. Oh, it looks like we went over the build limit, though. I mean, going with the build limit's not that big of a deal because you don't get that much of a benefit from doing that, but it's kind of unfortunate that we did that, but I'll just upgrade these, this roof here. Make it a bit stronger. Which is a skill point in the first skill tree to be able to upgrade things. You can upgrade it. I can actually upgrade it twice, can't I? Oh, actually, no, I can't. Oh, yes, I can. I can upgrade it again, but... I don't think that's necessary, because that is a lot of resources when you're not a constructor who do get it a bit cheaper. Alright, so we put this down. They're going to be coming from over here. We have this thing in the way, which is kind of annoying. But I do have some traps in my inventory here. We have one of these only, though. Which I thought I had more. But you know, one's fine, too. One's definitely fine as well. So we'll put it right about, let's see, where does that put, they put that right there, which is interesting. Put it right here. I have, what is this? Wall lights. I don't know what wall lights do. I don't know if they stun or something. Are they actually, well, it doesn't say that it's, it has a power on it, but I don't know what it does. Because it doesn't seem to do damage. Not quite sure. Not quite sure, but... We can put some other things down. We'll put these down. We already went over the limit, so I can put down as many of these as I want. And I'm not too worried about using traps. Uh, too many traps, because... From what I've experienced in this game is that you get traps really fast anyway. And they fill up your inventory, because a lot of times you just sit on them. So, using these traps whenever I can, is I feel like it's fine. As well as weapons, too. If you just find weapons sitting around. Do I need to put one right here, though, is the question. Because this thing is in the way, but I think they'll still just walk around that. So I'll, I'll do that. I'm just hoping that the, the stuff doesn't flip. Because sometimes a storm will flip depending on the level. Well, I could put a jump pad down, though. This would actually be pretty nice. A little jump pad for my team. Yeah, I like that. I actually like that quite a bit. Make things a lot easier for us. A lot easier. And actually, can I do a jump pad launch pad? I don't know if that will overshoot where I'm going to be landing here. Uh, you know what? We might try it out. Jump pad into the launch pad to go over there. Okay, let's try it out. Let's see how this works. Okay, that works pretty well. Alright. Not bad. Genius building right there. I probably wouldn't have done this if we wouldn't have went over the build limit, but... You know what? Since we did, I can do what I want, but... Oh, okay. You gotta you got land on it properly, though. You definitely have to land on that properly. It does allow you to get over here quickly. And I don't really see too much of a use in putting it on the other side, because they're all going to be coming from this side anyway, so it's just in case something gets behind us. So I think we'll be good with this for now. And these traps, honestly, we don't have that many, but I'm not, I'm not really too worried. I feel like we're fine. All right, I'll ask these guys if they want if they're ready. Okay, I think this person's starting it up anyway. Ask my team if they're ready to rock, ready to defend the base. Let's start it up. All right. Teammate just started it up. I think I'm just going to jump on top and shoot. 
Like I said earlier, though, I'm playing a uh, character that is pretty tanky. So, I can I can be in the fray, obviously, but you, we do get a nice, nice little view from up here. Alright, that person just put a turret down. Okay. So, as you could have expected, the big guys are just tanky when it comes to these normal husks. The normal guys are, well, they're, they're your run-of-the-mill, just kind of average husk. And then your little guys are able to jump really far, but they're really, really squishy. So, it's good to keep that in mind. And it looks like, ooh, they're actually, they're being pretty smart here. They're, they're going completely around. I actually wasn't expecting that. They're, they're jumping off and going around. Because they know that they can't run through the center part, because of all because of all the traps and enemies we have right here. That was a, that was these they, they're smarter than I thought. The AI is uh, definitely smarter than I thought, but still, they're fueled by brains, so definitely still not the brightest, still not the brightest, but they do. I usually have some pretty scary husks, and as I said that, they have this big one right here, who's able to break right through your walls with one of his abilities, but we killed him really fast, so he wasn't able to do it. So, Because if he gets close to your, your base, he'll just run straight through. But it looks like the storm is switching locations now, and it looks like they're coming from the west. This could be bad, because we don't have anything defending this. I'm not- where- wait, where can they get up in the west, is what I'm wondering. Right here, it looks like? Yeah, right here. Right on this ramp, and they're just going to break through the fence early. Okay, good news here is that they're only coming from the west. And there's not much they can do from this location. It seems like they can only really go up one path. Oh, this guy. It's a big guy who has an explosive on himself who's able to throw it, actually, a propane tank. But we were able to blow it up before you got here. And my teammates do a lot of damage. They had some pretty good guns. I have a pretty good gun as well, so we're doing quite well here. And ooh, yeah, as he, there was a lob right there who threw a bomb at us, which I believe you can shoot the bombs out of the air. I haven't actually successfully done that, but I imagine that could come in handy in trying to keep your base alive. All right, shoot this thing. Bullet drop off is really intense in this game, so. Up close, I would be doing a lot more damage. I haven't really been using my ability. I could just use my grenade. I have a few grenades in. Oops, I accidentally fell right here. Not too big of a deal. I, I heal up really quickly as this character. In fact, I just got all my HP back. <laughs> all the little bit of HP I lost. All back from just killing one enemy right there. Yeah, and this dot damage on my weapon is actually doing quite well here. I only have to do a few shots to the normal zombies and they die really quickly. Yeah, looks like we have our, our ninja is over there. Just running around with a pistol and a sword. As they do in this game. Everyone else, since we're all just soldiers, we're just sitting up here. Uh, I think both of these. I, I know this, that, is that the same? That actually might be the same character. Are the same hero that the other person's playing, but actually just evolved. Which you can evolve your heroes in this game like Pokemon or something. <laughs> it is basically it, it makes allows you to get higher upgrades on the characters as well as it increases their power level by I think ten when it, once you evolve. And it does it gives you a fancy hat whenever you do it, which is probably the best part honestly. Okay. I think I want to get a bit closer. Ooh, we have a sneaky one coming over here that we can see on the map. He's underneath. Oh, it's a lobber. Yeah, lobbers tend to do that. They like to go around so they can try and get a, a sneaky spot to hit your base a little bit. All right. I kind of want to melee a little bit, although my character is, is not a melee-based character, really. He, in fact, he doesn't heal unless he only unless he uses a gun. His sword doesn't heal. I'm gonna re-kill something, so... 
But it's still fun to do it. I mean... Never gets old smashing a... A zombie's head in. Okay, I'm in a weird spot right now. They're not paying attention to me though, so I'm just kind of just shooting them. <laughs> just shooting them off to the side here. Oh man, those beehive guys, you always want to shoot the beehive off because the bees actually do a lot of damage in this game. Oh, no. Seems like they figured out where I am. Okay. Not bad. Wait, is the tr storm coming from all sides now? Okay, no, it's still just coming from the east. Uh-oh. Uh-oh, we got a smasher here. I'm actually killing this pretty quickly, actually. Yeah. Oh, I guess I had a teammate behind me <laughs> doing a bit of damage. And something I'm wondering about the character they're playing, since I was talking about how they had a support ability that allows you to get some extra attack speed and... Damage. I'm wondering if the attack speed I get works on the semi-automatic weapon because I'm just kind of Clicking really quickly and my weapons already so fast. I don't know if I can actually click faster for my semi-automatic weapon Because I know for automatic weapons. I mean you just hold down and your attack speed would be increased obviously, but I Guess it works the same with semi-automatic and I've been wasting a lot of ammo this game. Jeez gotta craft some which Crafting ammo in this game is really easy, as you can just do it on the fly, which is super nice in this game. It feels really, really fluid. And whenever you're playing a character like mine with a weapon like this, you do run out of ammo really quickly. And ooh, those things just jumped on my back. Those little, those little husks, they'll get you. They'll, they'll get you. Okay. Melee a little bit here. Okay, I want to heal though, so I'm just gonna shoot him. Just for the heal. I guess I have a heal gadget right here, which... Actually, I haven't even used my, uh, my airstrike. Probably won't even have to use it this game. We only have 30 seconds left and I still haven't used the airstrike. But... As, as the name suggests, you just call an airstrike from the sky. With that one. And then my other gadget it just heals everyone around me. I think I'll just use... Let's just use the airstrike right now. Why not? I mean, we're never going to use it this game. So, there it is. Boom. The airstrike. Someone else used theirs earlier. One or two people, actually. But it looks like we're about to... The game's about to end. I'm actually going to stop using my... My ammo right here. Save it for the future and future matches. And, ah. That was a... That was a successful... Successful match. The only thing is that we overbuilt a little bit, but you know that's that's fine. Overbuilding doesn't really, our keep going, staying within the limit range isn't really that big of a deal. I mean, it, you don't get too much of an extra benefit or reward at the end for doing that, so I'm not too worried. But end game stats. Actually, I'm the lowest combat score. We'll actually uh, let's let's leave that. We don't we don't need to see that. We don't need to see that. But I was just sitting on top of the base, so I wasn't really expecting to get the highest combat score there. And nice, we got two skill points for leveling up. In most matches that are around your your skill level, it seems like you level up pretty much every time. And since I'm on the second the second map, I do get two skill points now because the second skill tree takes two skill points to level up. Or, yeah, to get a new ability or something. Or a new perk. Got level 4 loot there. Not bad. Return to the home base. Let's see what we got there. Let's see what we got in our, our loot chest. Oh, we finished a lot of quests. I didn't even realize we finished that many. Okay, just a bit of XP, just a little bit of survivor XP. What is that? Schematic XP, which is basically XP for your weapons, which you get. You get weapon blueprints outside of the game, and you can upgrade them there, but you have to build the weapon in game. So you gotta keep that in mind. Because they do require resources to be built in game. And, ooh, got some V Bucks, which is good for opening rewards. Allowing you to get new weapons, new characters. Okay. Got the... The main quest completion there. We got an X Survivor XP. As well as we got a new Rare Survivor. 
Pretty cool, pretty cool. And what's the last quest here? Schematic XP. I'm actually not quite sure what that quest was for. I wasn't really paying attention. Okay, so they want me to defend my storm shield now. We won't do that in this video because it's uh, it would be quite long because I have to upgrade my my uh, my base because you do have your own personal base that you do have to do your quest for to defend it. Basically, I think you only defend it. I haven't had a. I haven't had a level in that my storm base or storm shield base where that where I haven't just defended it as it's I mean it's just defense and then it goes up to like ten, uh, and you have a different base on every single location. But we can look at my skill tree here. What do I want here? I want to go up here to get my to get the three star evolution for my character because the last ability you get. At least on my rare character, by evolving to level 3 is really, really good. So I want to actually get that very soon. But in order to get there, we have to go through this entire tree. I don't really feel like getting a trap evolu evolution. I don't think it's, traps are really all that important right now. Later on, I imagine they are. Or if you're playing single player, they are pretty useful. From my experience, since, well, you're alone. So <laughs> it's kind of difficult doing it all by yourself. But let's see, I think I will... Yeah, we'll just go in down this tree. I have one extra skill point because of something I did with the tier 1 skill tree where I haven't gotten the last two skills yet because you you have to do some quest in order to get those and I haven't gotten that quest yet. But I almost have the first skill tree filled out which is really nice. But we can go into our armory here. Just check everything out. We have our survivors which give you bonuses in game. Uh, you put them in squads. Survivor squads, which of course, right here, the EMT one gives you some HP. This one gives you damage. This one gives your, I think this tech is, I'm not exactly quite sure what tech does exactly. I believe it's, it's, I, I, I believe it's trap damage. I don't know if it's anything else though. But then resistance is shielding. So a lot of things that are pretty useful here, but actually they gave me... What did the new character they gave me do? Do I'm not quite sure what he what it said he did. Uh, oh, so they match. I guess these already match anyway, so that's not really too big of a deal. Yeah, it's not going to be too useful. I already have so many of the epic versions that it's not that I I don't really like putting the rares on here. Like this one, I, I actually still have a just an uncommon, but I didn't have anything else to put in in its place. So I need I need to kind of boost up my survivor. Squads a little bit to make myself a bit tankier, but that, that one's for the oops, that one's for the tech tree, which I don't traps aren't super useful, right? I mean, they're good and everything, but I, I, it seems like they do enough for me at the moment, so I'm not too worried about that right now. But from what I've heard, it does get a lot more difficult later on if you don't have traps. And then we have our defender squads, which is well, for defending my storm shield, I have a rifleman, gunslinger, and shotgunner. And we have some expedition squads thing, which are kind of weird. Basically, it's 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 like it's I guess I don't know the way to describe. I, it's like a, something you would see in a mobile game, where you send something to do something and then it comes back in a few hours or something. So maybe when you're going away for something, you'll put a hero on here because it has to be heroes. So if if it's someone you want to play, you have to make sure you're not really playing the game whenever whenever the, whenever you uh, send them on an expedition, or else you're going to be running without your main hero. But it does, it is useful for getting things quickly, although I feel like it's just better to do it in game, but hey, it's, I'm, I'm, I imagine it can become really useful later on if you have a lot of things going on at the same time, getting you resources and have a lot of heroes to do so, so. A lot of later game stage thing or later game things that you can access earlier on in the game, and look at the heroes as well. So they have four, technically four classes of heroes. They have Outlander, Ninja, Constructor, as well as Soldier. All the characters inside the classes do slightly different things. Uh, some are very different. Some are almost identical to each other. And they all have, they, they mostly have all their different unique play styles. The main ones I've been doing are these three right here. Two Soldiers, as well as uh, Outlander. 
this soldier is all about his that that uh, shockwave thing that I had with uh, this character Jonesy. It's a lot stronger on this character as it's your main damage source. You kind of just use it in a team in a giant fight, and then I almost said team fight, a giant fight, and then you can get a lot of damage off of that way. As well as it also increase whenever you use it on enemies, it increases the damage that can be dealt to them because of an, an ability he has that makes the enemies take more damage, and his shockwave applies it. So really good there. This character we already went over when we played him. The old survivalist Jonesy, his name is pretty self-explanatory, he survives, he just heals whenever he kills things, and he's, he has a lot of HP. And then this character, Ranger Deadeye, he's an outlander who's a bit more, he's pistol oriented, he's, he's basically just a pistol fighter, um, really through and through. Everything he does, like, increase your critical hit with pistols, increases pistol critical hit damage again, increases pistol damage, as well as... All Outlanders have Phase Shift, which is like Tracer, basically, from Overwatch, and allows you to dash a short distance, so he's a quick pistol gunner, which is pretty fun to play around with. And the other characters I don't really play too much, but I definitely want to play a bit more of them. I have a bunch of Constructors that I haven't played, but I, I look at a lot of their abilities. Some I think these two are pretty similar, but the rest are pretty different. Like, this is a tank, and then this one's almost completely just base-oriented, base defense, and then these are a bit more... Unique and like this one is like a nuker and this one's a well controller more of a control nuker doesn't do as much damage But is able to control fights a bit more so a lot of different things that I have to get useful are used to as This game is insanely complex for how simple the concept is But it does allow the game to have a lot of replayability, which is really nice because with a game like this where you're just fighting off basically zombies it does uh, you th it, it could it does it could be really or get really boring and repetitive really quickly, but the, the amount of stuff that they're that they have in the game allows it to kind of be a bit more, a bit more interesting and a bit more fun to play over and over again. But that is about it, guys, with our let's play of Fortnite. I hope you guys enjoyed. I know it's not Smite, but I've been playing this game a lot, and I wanted to make a video of it. And I haven't made a let's play in a long time, but yeah, I haven't slept in forever. But this was. <laughs> This video was worth it, and I really wanted to, I really wanted to make it, so. Yeah, so this has been the SV Gang, guys, playing some Fortnite. I hope you enjoyed, so please like, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you guys next time. Peace out.